When the group of sevens, seven painter A.Y. Jackson first considered painting the landscape of Georgian Bay in Ontario, he said, quote, it's a great country to have a holiday in, but it's nothing but little islands covered with scrub and pine trees and not quite paintable. Sketching simply won't go. But then he had a conversion. Seeing the early works of fellow and other group of seven painters, his eyes were open and he ended up painting Georgian Bay, November. You can feel the wind. That's March storm, Georgian Bay. And winter, Georgian Bay. Ross King, in his book, Defiant Spirits, writes, Georgian Bay's wind-sculpted pine trees, clear atmosphere, expanses of water, and masses of Precambrian rock seemed to call for the strong outlines, broad patches of color, and dynamic forms that Van Gogh, for example, who was a very much one who impressed Jackson, Van Gogh, for example, had used to capture the clear light and gesticulating cypresses in the south of France. And if you love paintings and know Van Gogh, you can see those hard, strong lines with which he painted those cypresses. A.Y. Jackson and the group of seven painted in a new way for a new time, their time here on this earth in a way that, in their estimation, was the necessary way for capturing, capturing the essence, the spirit in behind Canada. They used strong outlines and broad patches of color, sometimes hugely vibrant colors, and very dynamic forms. Jesus' parables were kind of the same. In order to convey a new message to get the spirit of the kingdom of God for that day, he told stories that had to be told in a certain kind of way and painted them with words that were just right for conveying that deep spiritual truth. There was a way to get at the essence of who his father and what his father's kingdom was like. Strong outlines broad patches of color, dynamic forms. Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God as being like flowers. They neither sow nor reap, and yet they are clothed in such beauty here today and gone tomorrow. What are you worrying about? If I take care of these flowers, I will take care of you. Vines. Jesus called himself a way, a road. He said, unless you become like a little child, unless you know your helpness and how utterly dependent you really are with all of your capacities and skills really on God, and that apart from the fact that you're held, you're not even, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. He said in the Gospel of John that his Holy Spirit was like a wind, sometimes a still soft wind, but sometimes a Georgian Bay gale force wind. The kingdom of God is like a net or a man who built his house on the rock. It's like a sower who went out to sow his seeds or a reaper proclaiming a harvest. Jesus called himself the light of the world, knowing that he was the wisdom through which those words calling for light, let there be light, were spoken. Jesus grew up a good Jewish boy, reading the Bible's poets and prophets who in their vivid metaphorical imagery 
likened God to a rock. who wrote that every cloud is a flag to his faithfulness in Psalm 88. Prophets and poets who saw snow as a sign of God's blanketing word to us that will not return to him empty, but will bring nourishment and life and flourish to God's world. That psalmic poetic imagery was ingrained in Jesus He'd memorized, in all likelihood, the phrase, deep calls to deep in the roar of God's waterfalls. And he knew innately that God's love and righteousness are like the the mighty mountains. Jesus' way, embodied way, and word way, of conveying and painting God's truth was radical new and necessary for his day and because of the kingdom of God subject matter that he was painting. And the establishment, like I said last week in terms of the group of seven's response, was not impressed. They were shocked at the way the group of seven used urgent colors, quote, and liberal paint handling, unquote. Their use of sharp contrasts of light and shade and crashing bars of color offended so many sensibilities. That's not reality. That's not how you paint reality. That's not the way you convey the essence. You have to paint it in a real way with doctrines and laws and very clear perspectives and traditions that we hold on to forever. Don't you start to paint what the kingdom of God can be in those ways, what Canada can be in these ways. This is outside of the box. You are breaking the rules. Surely Canada is not like this. Surely God does not speak and reveal himself in these ways. Both the group of seven and Jesus painted outside of the lines because sometimes you need to shake people up. You need to wake them up to the country you live in and its majesty, to the kingdom you're called to and its glory. And the old ways and the old stories, good, gifted, God things, right for their time, still right now, are not always the only ways. In order to catch the orangey, yellowy redness, of that particular maple forest, you you couldn't paint every leaf exactly the way you would have seen it and every branch in a detailed way. You you would have killed it. You had to feel the the chaotic orangey redness of it by painting it this way. In order to capture how radical God's forgiving love is, Jesus needed to tell a story of a no-good-for-nothing son who blew half of his dad's estate, partying, being then accepted by that father back into the home as a son. He needed to paint a painting of a sinning tax collector kneeling in a temple beside a good, in the worst sense of the word, hypocritical Pharisee, And then make the point that God's actually going to forgive the messed up guy before he forgives the good religious leader. You need to say it in a way that catches people's breath, that has a turn, that creates an aha, an epiphany. In a way that only kind of abstractness and beauty and strong lines can convey. That leads to a conversion. The mystery of those group of seven paintings led to a conversion in A.Y. Jackson. The mystery of Jesus' parables led to a conversion, opened the eyes of his disciples. Matthew chapter 13, the disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables, Jesus? 
why do you paint this the way you do, this impressionist, post-impressionist, post-Hebraic, Hebraic, new? Why this way? And Jesus replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Those who have will be given more, and they will have an abundance. As for those who do not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. And then he quotes Isaiah, Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will ever be hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart, and stop thinking it's just the people that we like to stereotype and put in a box as being those people, those Pharisees with the problem, and maybe start to hear it for yourself, John. For this people's heart has become calloused, They hardly hear with their ears, and they've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn. Ah! And I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. I think for their time, the group of seven were gifted with eyes by God to see the country, Canada, that God made and capture it, and then through their creative giftings, put it on canvas for us to see and enjoy. Even as the disciples were given ears to hear Jesus' message, they all had the imagination and the faith and the love. When you love something, they loved Canada. (laughs) Jesus loves Canada. (laughs) loves the work of his hands. You see goodness there and beauty and truth with new eyes. 